You are listening to the Keep the Weight Off podcast with Dr. Angela and Marshall, episode number 141. Welcome to the Keep the Weight Off podcast, where we bust all the dieting myths and discover not just how to lose weight, but more importantly, how to keep it off. We go way beyond the food and we use science and psychology to give you strategies that work. And now your host, Dr. Angela Zekman. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast this week. How are you doing today, Marcel? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I am recovering from my overseas trip, but I think I'm finally back to normal now. Good. Um, Yeah. Hey, I wanted to let everybody listening to this podcast know that we had some really, really exciting news in the world of obesity medicine this last week, and you may or may not have heard about it. The Food and Drug Administration has finally approved terzepatide for the treatment of obesity. In other words, for weight loss. Yay! I know. We've been waiting (laughs) so long for this, like months and months and months, over a year. We've been using this medication for the treatment of diabetes since June of 2022 under the trade name Manjaro. Okay, so if you've heard of Manjaro... This is the same medication. You can't use Manjaro unless you have diabetes. And so now we have an indication for obesity treatment or for weight loss. So anyone with a body mass index over 30 or anyone with a body mass index 27 or above with at least one weight-related complication is eligible to um, be prescribed terzepatide for obesity. Now, it's expensive. It's like $1,000 a month. Apparently, it's going to be a little bit cheaper than Wagovi, though. So the manufacturer, um, the drug company is Lilly, and Lilly has decided to price their drug a little bit more competitively. And um, so I'm happy about that. But it's still really, really expensive if you don't have insurance coverage for it. We don't have it available yet to prescribe. It's just only been FDA approved this last week, but we are hoping to have it ready to go soon. And um, I'm still kind of waiting to hear if there's going to be a coupon. There's a rumor that there's going to be a coupon. So we'll see what happens. I just want everybody to know that, you know, we really are. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago after the obesity medicine conference. We really are in this sort of tipping point when it comes to the care and treatment of people who are struggling with obesity in that we have these amazing new drugs that we're able to prescribe. And so super excited about this one. We've been using Manjaro for our patients with diabetes and we've noticed really significant weight loss. Uh, It does a great job of controlling blood sugar. It's also helping to correct insulin resistance, which just really helps with weight loss. So, and they're just discovering all kinds of other benefits too. So Uh, I just wanted to make sure that you all knew that we have new treatment options available. Okay, so wait, so so let me just chime in for a second here, if you don't mind. So before we start getting a bunch of phone calls, so (laughs) I just wanted to clarify, it has been approved, but it's not available yet. Exactly. So do you, yeah, do you know, Angela, when that might be? I don't. Um, Okay. The word on the street is early December um, and for sure by January 2024. So, okay. Yeah. I think the sooner the better. I mean, I really was wanting to wring the necks of some of the FDA regulators for holding off for so long um, yeah. in approving this because this is life saving treatment. You know, obesity kills people. And th- this drug is just really profound. And so I just, I'm just thrilled that we now have this option to help people live longer, happier, healthier lives. You know, so. If you are struggling with this disease, I want you to know that there's plenty of reason for hope that you can get it under control. You can lose weight, you can get healthy, and most importantly, keep the weight off, right? Right. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So with that introduction, I wanted to talk today about the holiday season because Thanksgiving is next week. <laughs> Can you Yay, believe I'm glad it? we're talking about that. Yeah, let's let's get oh into the holiday gosh. spirit. <laughs> like November is already almost over and yeah. Thanksgiving is upon us. And before you know it, Christmas parties will be coming and 
it's a rough season for people who are struggling with this disease. So we wanted to help you make sure that you make it through the holidays without gaining a bunch of weight. How does that sound? Yeah, that's a, that sounds perfect. Okay, great. Good. So last year, we were at podcast number 89 at this time of the year last year. So now wow, we're at 141. Really? Yeah, Jeez. can you believe it? I know. Yeah. So we talked about this process called WHOOP, which was developed by a psychologist named Gabrielle Ettingen or something like that, Ettingen. And WHOOP stands for, it's W-O-O-P, WHOOP, stands for Wish, uh, Outcome, Obstacle, and Plan. So W-O-O-P, Wish, Outcome, Obstacle, and Plan. And so you ask yourself four questions. What do I wish for? So think about your holiday season and ask yourself, what do I wish for? What is the outcome I'm trying to achieve? What are some of the inner obstacles I will face? And how can I plan to overcome those obstacles? So this is a really great process to go through. And so I'd like to encourage our listeners to go back and listen to podcast number 89 for specific details on the WHOOP process if you're interested in doing that after you're done listening to this podcast. Okay. Yeah, Did you do that I, podcast? I remember, yeah, I remember this last year. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's all coming back to me now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's something that, you know, you can whoop anything, but unless yeah. you're doing it on a regular basis, it's something that's easy to learn and then forget. So it's nice to go back to it. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to add to that. And I'm just going to give you some general strategies for how to think about the holiday season. Remember, um, the holidays are a time of celebration, of joy, and sometimes, unfortunately, overindulgence, right? For some of us who've lost important loved ones in our lives, the holidays can feel sad. So like the holidays are like whatever is going on in our lives, whether it's happy or whether it's sad, whether you're feeling overwhelmed, whether you're feeling lonely, or whether you're just really, really joyful, the holidays can seem like they put a magnifying glass over all of it. And it really magnifies whatever it is that we're feeling. So I just want us all to keep this in mind as you think about how you want your holiday season to be. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to provide you with some practical strategies to help you navigate the tempting holiday treats while still enjoying this season and all of its festivities, regardless of what might be going on for you. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, let's, let's get into it. Okay. So first and foremost, it's important to approach the holidays with a positive mindset. So we say this yeah. over and over again. Don't we say this all the time? Yeah, it really true. does all begin in your head, in your thoughts, yeah. right? Yeah. So first thing I want you to do is to ask yourself, how am I thinking about the holidays? So are you feeling nervous and scared and worried about how you're going to handle all the temptations? Are you feeling confident and competent? What thoughts come up naturally for you? So what would you say, Marcia? Yeah, so typically it's, I mean, okay, so when I first started my journey, mm -hmm. of course, I was nervous because, you know, yeah. people didn't know a whole lot about what I was doing. And yeah. I knew that I was going to navigate new situations. And I yeah. knew that, um, especially with my, you know, my mom's cooking, we've talked about this a lot on different podcasts, <laughs> you know, I have a really hard time, um, mm. you know, saying no to her baking goodies. And right. so at first, you know, it was a lot of like conversations that had to happen. And, yeah. um, and like I said, so I was nervous, you know, the first couple years and uh -huh. then, I started to become more confident. The more the, the more I communicated um, uh -huh. with my family, the yeah. more confident I became. And I think uh -huh. now at this point, people just kind of know me, and they know yeah. you know what I what you know what I expect, or you know what how I'm going to behave, or what you know what I'm going to eat, basically. And yeah. um, and I think something that really resonated with me that you said was you know when you said. Be there more for the relationships with your other family members and to spend yeah. time and to focus more on that um, yeah. than the food because that's kind of what happened. It's like I would go in focused on the food, you know, yeah. being, whether being nervous or being confident, I was still focused on the food. And yeah. I just kind of forgot to 
um, enjoy myself. And so when I went in with the um, expectation of just enjoying my time with Mm -hmm. my loved ones, it was a lot more successful for me. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's profound. Thanks for saying that. Yeah, Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, so ask yourself, what stage are you at here? If you're sort of a beginner and you're feeling nervous, that's really normal. If you've been at this for a little while, you're feeling a little bit more competent, that's awesome. And if you're at the stage where, you know, the food just doesn't matter all that much to you anymore, you're just more focused on relationships, like more power to you, right? (laughs) So, so yeah, I I, I can kind of see like, three different categories of where well, people yes. might be at. Yeah. Right. And so, and one thing that did help me too, is like, if there was like a party that I was going to go to and I mm-hmm. didn't really know what they were going to be serving and it was like food oriented, I would eat before. Yeah. And, and I had, and I had, I learned that that was, that was something that was so beneficial when I learned that is to not Mm -hmm. go hungry and, you know, to eat first, eat my protein first. And then when I went there, I wasn't starving. And I, and I, like I said, I could enjoy my time with, you know, my, my relatives, people that I don't see very often. And Mm -hmm. um, it just changed everything. Yeah. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about how you can go through the holidays sort of more mindfully. So instead of thinking about this as a time to restrict yourself, view it as an opportunity to make mindful choices that align with your health and wellness goals. So think it through ahead of time. What's important to you? So maybe there are some food treats that are important to you, like Thanksgiving is next week. If you absolutely love pumpkin pie, You don't have to deprive yourself of pumpkin pie. Like no one has a weight problem because they had a piece of pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving, right? (laughs) Right. That's true. People have weight problems for other reasons. It's not because they indulged in a piece of pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving. So make your choices really, really mindful and choose ahead of time about what you're going to indulge in and what you're going to steer clear of. Make sure that you have it ahead. And we always talk about the 24-hour plan, and the same is true with holiday dinners and holiday parties and all of that. You want to think it through ahead of time. Like, what's likely to be available to me? What am I, what is, what is a really important thing for me that I kind of want to, like, I really only get this once a year and I want to have a splurge. That's fine to do that, right? Now, if you know, like, my mother's Russian tea cakes were something that I would, that would really set me off. So if you know that there's something that's, even though it's really special, it's likely to set you off. You got to ask yourself, you know, is it going to be worth it? If you, if you choose to eat it, like if I were to, if I were to eat one Russian tea cake, I'd be off and running. Like there's, I'd have a really hard time. (laughs) Yeah. I just know that if I go somewhere and I'm hungry, then I'm likely going to make bad choices. Like if I, the, the best thing I ever did was learn how to eat before I went to eat and just yeah. eat my protein and uh-huh. make sure that I was not hungry. Like, and then yeah. I could go and my whole mindset was different. It wasn't focused on the food because yeah. I was already full. So then I yeah. could just eat a little bit of this if I wanted to taste something. It just changed everything for me. So yeah. if, you know, if you're going to go somewhere, eat, you know, eat protein first, eat your protein and then mm-hmm. things will change and you can be more mindful. That's, that's my yeah. advice. Yeah. And if you're asked to bring something, So bring something special, but that's also healthy. So for example, I love to make deviled eggs. People love deviled eggs and you know, you can make, you can make them really decorative and pretty. I like to make caprese salads at the holidays because you know, the tomato is red and the basil is green. It's just really pretty. Um, So there are those kinds of things. Everyone loves these foods and they're really good for you too. And they take a little extra effort. So they do feel special. If you're looking for something that you can bring, just Google low-carb holiday foods, and you're going to find all kinds of ideas for recipes to make that will be special and healthy at the same time. So that's a way that you can actually make contributions to a holiday party and have it be healthy and special at the same time. Okay. Yeah. And, and if you're new, I just think, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, mm-hmm. You know, just, it just takes time to learn. It gets easier every year, every year you know, it gets as, easier. as you learn. Yeah. As you learn. Mm-hmm. So it just takes time. 
Yeah. So if you end up going off the rails, like, don't worry, don't, don't be yourself yeah, about exa- it. It's yeah, fine. exactly. Exactly. The only thing that's going to really derail your progress is if you go off the rails and then you beat yourself up for it and then you don't get yourself back on track. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. how it goes. So yeah, yeah, so exactly. just, yeah. So just be kind to yourself. Yeah. Okay. Here is um, something else I want to talk about, which is alcohol. So this is another super common holiday temptation. There's eggnog. There's all kinds of drinking going on. We've done podcasts on alcohol before. The problem with alcohol is that your body's going to use the calories in alcohol for energy instead of using energy from fat that you're trying to lose. So it will definitely slow down your fat loss. Um, The other problem with alcohol is that it essentially shuts off your prefrontal cortex. So that's the part of your brain that is the thinking, planning, looking ahead part of your brain, your prefrontal cortex. And so this leaves you at the mercy of your primitive brain, which is just kind of looking for pleasure and ease. And so you end up at the mercy of your primitive brain and you'll end up face down in a bowl of chips or a plate of Christmas cookies if you're drinking. It's possible. So you want to be really, really careful with alcohol. So plan your drinking ahead of time. And always start with water or sparkling water, something. Start with a non-alcoholic beverage, then have an alcoholic beverage, and then go back to a non-alcoholic beverage and alternate so that you're not drinking alcohol the entire night. Okay. Yeah, and make sure you drink a lot of water in between yeah. too. Yeah, exactly. Like maybe even an alcoholic drink and then two non-alcoholic yeah, drinks. Yeah. Yeah. Two, yeah. Yeah. Make, yeah. Drink. Hydrate. 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 Yeah, exactly. Great. Okay. And here is another tip. Remember to stay active during the holiday season. So I know that it's a little bit more challenging because the days are shorter and it's darker and we have this natural tendency to want to just sort of hunker down and not do a lot of exercise. But what I've discovered is that regular exercise will really help keep you focused and on track. And I just feel better when I'm exercising. Even if the days are getting shorter, it just keeps me from getting depressed with seasonal affective disorder. It keeps me from getting overstressed. Um, So try your best not to use holiday busyness as an excuse to skip your regular exercise. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm actually glad you just brought this up because I am really struggling with this now that the time change has really gotten to me. And um, my husband and I have been talking about it. We're like, why do we just have no motivation to go mm-hmm. to the gym and work out mm-hmm. like we had been and mm-hmm. we just can't figure out like what what the deal is with that so we're really struggling with it right now yeah. and I got to figure out a way to you know just to to get back get back the motivation to want to do it yeah. because you know once when we were doing it it was like really fun I felt really good and yeah. um you know and I was I was just on track and you know we just things got in the way life happens like it does yeah. and mm-hmm. we're trying to you know refine you know the the time for that and the motivation mm-hmm. for it and mm-hmm. like I said right now it just seems really challenging Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else is struggling with it, but I am. And I just need to, you know, I just need to get back there and do it because it's, I'd really enjoy it when I'm doing it. Yeah. Well, were you doing it after work and before it would yeah, get dark? Yes, we, yes, yeah. Yes. We're, yes. So now, we're doing after work. Yeah. There you go. That's exactly when so we were doing it. So now it's dark after work. Yeah. Right? And it feels like you should go home. Oh I've been wanting to go to bed at 6 30. I don't know if anybody else is dealing with this. Yeah. Yeah. But ever since the time change, it has really kicked my ass. Like uh-huh. I come home and I is, I tell my husband, I'm like, okay, I'm ready for bed. And he's like, it's literally 6 30. <laughs> I'm like, I know. I don't understand what's wrong with me. So I don't know yeah. if anyone else is, is dealing with oh, this, I but am, for this sure. time change has been really challenging for me. It's thrown me off of uh-huh. my regular routine. It's thrown me off of my exercising. I'm just throwing me yeah. off period. So yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's it's been a struggle. Yeah. Well, my recommendation would be instead of going home after work, just go straight to the gym. That's a good idea. Because the gym will have lights on. And yeah, that's a great idea. you won't notice that it's dark. <laughs> Yeah. And that will make your days feel a little bit longer. So then by the time you do get home, you are actually ready to wind down, have your dinner and wind down and go to bed. But yeah, um, yeah, because because that, you know, I exercise in the morning. And so 
to me, yeah. getting, getting, cause when it's, when it's dark during, you know, like it doesn't even get light here in the Pacific Northwest. It doesn't get light until seven thirty, seven forty five in the dead of winter. Right. And yeah. so if I go to the gym in the morning and I'm there underneath all of those bright lights in the gym, it just wakes me up quicker, you know? Yeah, so, that's a good helps idea. With the circadian rhythm. Yeah, maybe so. we need to change. You know, like our when we're going, but we got to change something. I know that, and and yeah. uh, we need to do it today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So so just remember to do your best to because you know a lot of a lot of people feel like well there's so much extra work to do during the holidays I just don't have time to exercise, and I want you to think about if, if those are the thoughts that are going through your head, I want you to challenge those thoughts. I want you to say, Hey, wait a minute. Yes. There might be a few extra tasks, but that doesn't mean that my exercise has to go as well. I can work around it. Okay. So do the best you can to keep exercising. Um, and remember we're not exercising to burn off calories. We're exercising to keep our good mental status so that we're not emotionally eating. All right. Okay. Next is think about how you're going to manage stress. This kind of goes along with that. Remember what I said about the holidays. They tend to put a magnifying glass over everything that's going on for us. So we can get pretty stressed out. And this can lead to emotional eating and emotional drinking. So be sure to take the time that you need for self-care. Really focus on your nutrition. Really focus on your sleep. And focus on your exercise. You're really no good to anyone unless you've taken good care of yourself first. So make sure that you keep up your meditation practice or your yoga practice or whatever it is that you're doing to be mindful. Keep the big picture in mind. Don't sweat the small stuff and you'll make it through just fine. Yeah. And, you know, and also, you know, we have our Facebook group and if anybody's feeling, mm -hmm. you know, like I am out of sorts or challenge, you know, that's another place for all of us to connect to. And, you know, and if anybody has any tips for me, you know, mm -hmm. to get motivated again, or anybody wants yeah. to share, you know, their exercise experience or just, you know, how yeah. to get back into the group, I would yeah. love to hear about it, you know, on Sugar that's and Power Busters. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I'm challenging anybody that's got any, got any um, <laughs> motivational, you know, um, advice tips. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tips. Uh, go ahead yeah. and share that with us on, um, on Sugar and Flower Buster Society on Facebook. That's great. All right. Okay, good. So always remember one indulgent meal or treat is not going to derail your progress. Don't beat yourself up. Get back on track the next day. Focus on making healthier choices. So these are some of the practical tips to help you navigate the holiday season without gaining weight. Remember, it's all about moderation, being mindful, maintain a positive attitude towards your health and wellness goals. Okay. Do you have anything else you want to add, well, Marshall? This is, this is perfect. This is great advice. I'm taking this to, to heart. Okay, great. And also remember, if you want more focused help, you can join us in Empowered Weight Loss, which is my membership for people who are serious about learning all the skills that are necessary to lose weight and take it off. Learning how to eat correctly is only the first step. Taking medications is a big piece of it, but there's way more to do, and you can never diet your way back to health. So come and join us, and in just six months, you're going to learn everything you need to know to lose weight and keep it off. So you can join us at Journey Beyond Weight Loss dot com forward slash yes. And as always, thank you for tuning into our podcast. We hope these tips will help you have a happy and healthy holiday season. Stay tuned for uh, more episodes next week. And until next time, stay mindful and stay healthy. Take care, everyone. Bye. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, if you really want to lose weight and keep it off for good, your next step is to sign up for Dr. Angela's free weight loss course, where you're going to learn everything you need to get started on your weight loss journey the right way. Just head over to journeybeyondweightloss.com slash free course to sign up. Also, it would be awesome if you could take a few moments and write a review on iTunes. Thanks, and we'll see you in Journey Beyond Weight Loss.